I have something so cool to share with you, and I know you're going to love it because I shared something called the let them theory in an Instagram post less than a week ago. And I just looked it up. There are over 14 million views of this thing, which always tells me when something goes that viral, that it strikes a nerve. And in this post, it's just a quick selfie video, and I'm explaining what's called the let them theory. It is a game changer, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. But to just tee this up, since this went so viral, I want you to hear what I said in this selfie video on Instagram. Check this out. I just heard about this thing called the let them theory. I freaking love this. If your friends are not inviting you out to brunch this weekend, let them. If the person that you're really attracted to is not interested in a commitment, let them. If your kids do not want to get up and go to that thing uh, with you this week, let them. So much time and energy is wasted on forcing other people to match our expectations. And the truth is, if somebody, especially somebody you're dating or who's a friend or somebody you're trying to partner with in business, if they are not showing up how you need them to show up, do not try to force them to change. Let them be themselves because they are revealing who they are to you. Just let them. And then you get to choose what you do next. The let them theory. It's so obvious. And once you learn it, you are going to use it so many times a day, you will, it's just going to blow your mind. Because the let them theory is going to allow you to detach yourself from the things that cause a lot of struggle and angst and emotion to come up when you get controlling. The let them theory also allows you to let go of the reins and give space for other people to take responsibility. Let them do it. And finally, what you're going to learn is that the let them theory, it is incredible because when you let somebody just be who they actually are, and you stop trying to make them something else, you realize in so many friendships and so many relationships, you actually are in love with their potential. You're not in a relationship with who the person really is. And you've been so busy controlling and trying to change them that you don't even recognize that you're in a relationship with their potential. And when you let somebody be who they actually are, wow, it allows you to understand who you're actually dealing with. So I can give you a quick example of the let them theory in play because it works for things big and small. And I will tell you, this is something that I have to use all the time. Just this weekend, it was our son Oakley's prom. He's a junior in high school. And here we are in Southern Vermont. And I'm used to doing prom a certain way because we raised our daughters outside of Boston in a suburban town. They're also daughters, so they were more controlling. They were organizing everything. It was a community where I knew all the families, all the kids, the traditions were locked in. Everybody knows everybody else. And so here we are in this new town in Southern Vermont, and Oakley's going to the prom with somebody we, we've never met, don't know her parents. We don't know any of the traditions here, and it doesn't seem like there are a lot of them, honestly. But one of the traditions that was present is that there were girls that were organizing uh, groups of people to come to their house for pre prom photos. So we go to this person's house, and it was really great, great to meet everybody, didn't know a soul there. We get there, and I'm standing there with Oakley, and it starts to rain. And not just rain, it is like a torrential downpour. The kind of storm where you go, that really sucks. You know, it really sucks. Like you are going to look like you have taken a shower if you walk out the front door of this house and try to walk 20 feet through this rain to get to your car. That's how hard it was pouring rain. And so they're standing there. And it's about five o'clock at night. Prom starts at seven and the kids start talking. So what do you want to do for dinner? And I look at Oakley and I say, you guys don't have a reservation somewhere? He goes, no. And I then said, well, what are you going to do? Do you want me to call? And I start then jumping in, right? And over-functioning with my anxiety, which we have talked about before on this podcast, the do-do-do. And the kids are kind of gathering around and somebody goes, well, why don't we go to Avocado Pit? 
Now, avocado pit, just to put this in context, is this amazing little, um, amazing taco place, right? It's got maybe six tables in it. It's tiny. It's like the size of one stall of a garage. So we're talking one car parking place. And there are 20 kids in tuxedos and long dresses, dressed to the nines. It is a torrential downpour outside. And their plans for prom are to go to a fast casual joint in the center of town that could maybe have six of them standing inside. And I immediately start going, you can't go to Avocado Pit. You're going to get wet. What about? I am controlling. I'm that person. And my daughter turns to me and she says, Mom, if they want to go to Avocado Pit, let them. It's his prom. It's not your prom. Let them. And when she said, let them, it's as if I just went hands off. It was this little cue that was like, okay, you're doing that thing. Just turn from controlling everything, Mel, and let the current of what's happening take you in a different direction. And immediately what happens when you adopt the let them theory is that you are able to catch yourself when you're controlling people and you don't need to be. You are able to drop into a more surrender, peaceful feeling instead of letting your emotions rev you up. And it kind of begs the question, right? Because I've been thinking about this. Why did the let them theory, why is it so resonant for people? Why did 14 million people in a matter of a week watch and share that video? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because every single one of us struggles with controlling behavior or we struggle with controlling thoughts. And the let them theory is a way that you can check yourself so that your controlling nature or your controlling or obsessive thoughts don't control you. Because the reason why we do this, we control other people or we just can't let it go. Like, have you ever been in a situation where maybe your buddies organize a golf trip and they don't include you? Or the women in your life go away for a weekend and you're not invited? Or a friend. A friend that you adore is dating a real asshole, somebody who's horrible for them. Let them. I mean, how much does you worrying about it, how, how is that going to change anything? It's not. How does spending 200 hours talking to your friend about this horrible person over and over and over, how does that help? It doesn't. Let them. If somebody's firing you, let them. If your company's going through layoffs, let them. It is so liberating when you drop the sword, when you just let go. And there's this really interesting analogy that's going to help you that comes from a psychologist. I've got a ton of notes for this. You're going to hear me uh, doing my notes because I want to get this right because there's so many tools because this does not come naturally to us. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, there's a psychologist, Dr. Amy Johnson, who uses this example. And I think we can keep coming back to this visual. When you tip into that control mode. And we all do it. I mean, come on, you can kind of go, oh God, Mel, let the kids get a burrito for crying out loud. But don't you dare tell me that if the roles were reversed, you wouldn't have questioned the decision to not have a reservation, first of all, before prom. And secondly, to then want to go to some burrito bar, right? In the middle of a rainstorm. But I digress. Here is the visual from Dr. Amy Johnson. She says, whenever you go into control mode, imagine that you are in a tiny, tiny boat, and you're paddling upstream. You are paddling against the current. It is hard to paddle against the current. It is a fight. That is what it feels like when you're controlling other people, right? Or you're trying to control them. That's what it felt like for me at this pre prom party. Because as these kids are casually talking about driving over to the avocado pit and grabbing a bite to eat, I've got my oars and I'm fighting against that current. And I'm like, but, 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 but you should have had other things. But what about this? But you're going to get your, your, your date's going to get her dress wet. But, 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 what the fuck, Mel? So what Dr. Johnson says is that when you catch yourself doing it, you are fighting against the current. You are literally paddling up emotion inside of you and resistance and frustration. Because it's frustrating when you can't control the people around you, Right. It's frustrating. It doesn't create more control. It actually makes you feel less in control. What she says is you must let go and surrender. And so she'll visualize, 
just hands off the oars, drop the oars. And what happens is the boat in that situation, what does it do? It turns around. And instead of going upstream, when you drop the oars, the boat naturally just floats downstream with the current of how things are going. And you will notice the same thing, that instead of fighting what's happening, you are able to drop the oars and just surrender to what's going on, which creates peace and ease for you. Because does it matter if Oakley and his friends want to go to the avocado pit? Of course not. Who gives a shit? In fact, it might be the most memorable part of prom. Standing in the pouring rain, all of them crowded in this restaurant, ordering tacos before the thing. And so the bigger point here is I don't think any of us are aware of just how much energy and effort and time we waste on shit that we're trying to control. And the let them theory is a lever that you can pull so you can create more peace and ease and love and all of it in your life so you can float with the current of things instead of battling it so far. And the reason why we have this controlling nature is, believe it or not, it's a form of anxiety. When you are overbearing on people, maybe you're an overbearing parent. We have a lot of people who write into this show whose parents are immigrants to the United States, and they were completely overbearing. Why? Well, because of two reasons. Number one, they probably had a lot of fears. There was a lot of uncertainty. They wanted you to succeed. They wanted you to fit in. They wanted you to have the best of everything and more opportunities than they did. And so they pushed you and pushed you and pushed you and pushed you. And the second reason why people do that is because they think it's a form of love. That if I push you, if I look out for the best for you, if I think about all the things that could go wrong and I micromanage you, don't forget your umbrella, don't forget your lunch, do this, do that, be this kind of major, that you think you are looking out for the best for somebody. But what you're actually doing is you're suffocating people. The second reason why we are also controlling and why you need the let them theory is because it's easier to focus on other people. You trick yourself into thinking that you're going to be in control if you can control other people. It doesn't work that way because you can't control other people. You can manipulate them. You can guilt them. You can shame them. You can compliment them. You can love them, but you can't control them. Okay. You can just try to. The person that you can control is yourself. And every time you use the let them theory, you immediately reverse the focus of that control on everybody else. And you turn it back on yourself. I'll give you an example of that. Let's say that your friends have gone away this weekend, okay? And your feelings are hurt. If you sit there and worry about it, why did they, uh, they left me out? I feel left out. I'm always left out. What did I do wrong? Ba 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 ba. Maybe I should text them. Maybe I should say something. Maybe I should. No. You know what you should do? You should let them go away. You should let them go away. And you should stop focusing on what they're doing because all this obsessing about it and thinking about what you need to do in order to control what's happening, it's not working. And secondly, it's distracting you from what you really need to do, which is put the focus back on yourself. As you're sitting there, ask yourself, well, if I'm this upset by it, what do I need to do to make sure that I am proactive about friendships, that I'm the one organizing these things? That's where the real power is. And finally, the reason why we engage in such controlling behavior and these obsessive thoughts is because oftentimes it distracts us from the truth. Oftentimes when you are, you know, I, I stop and think a little bit about this situation with Oakley and the prom, and it's really dumb, but there's a very deep underlying thing that was going on. I've gone through four prom experiences with our daughters in a public high school outside of Boston. And it was not like the prom here. And I think all of the things that felt unfamiliar reminded me that I'm in a new place. We got home from that uh, pre-prom photo party. I turned to Chris and I said, you know, I'm really kind of sad because I miss knowing all the kids. And I miss knowing all the parents. And I miss seeing kids that I have known since they were in diapers, all grown up in tuxes. 
and I think I'm just kind of sad. And I'm controlling where Oakley is going to eat because that was something that was always part of the prom experience back home. And so a lot of times the controlling or the obsessing is triggered by the way you think things should be or the way that you're used to things being and you're uncomfortable with the uncertainty, which is why you jump in and you do this. And so that's where the let them theory comes in because you can use the let them theory for just about anything. I shared something in an Instagram post less than a week ago. There are over 14 million views of this thing, which always tells me when something goes that viral that it strikes a nerve. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode, the let them theory. My mom and dad don't wanna come to Thanksgiving, let them. My son or daughter doesn't wanna go to medical school, let them. My roommates don't wanna do dry January with me, let them. Stop trying to force other people to do what you want them to do. 